News Radio 700 WLW. So it's uh, it's March Madness. It begins tomorrow night in Dayton with the four uh, with the play-in games, and uh, then it continues on with the real deal starting on Thursday. And of course, there are all over America companies that are right now organizing office pools. I mentioned that Austin Elmore uh, here at uh, the iHeart Media Complex in uh, Cincinnati is the uh, station bookie. And uh, he's organizing uh, to try and get everybody involved in this. And there's there has been mixed reaction among the corporate world as to whether or not uh, getting consumed with March Madness cuts down on productivity or if it actually helps. Now, this is interesting. Office team recently surveyed more than 1,000 managers on the effects of the NCAA tournament in their workplaces, and three out of four, 75% of these people that were, were surveyed said it has absolutely no effect on morale or productivity. If you go back to 2010, just 12 years ago, 41% of executives surveyed felt the tournament celebrations Help morale, 22% thought it hurt productivity. Are people taking more time away from their job to concentrate on basketball, or does basketball make it more of a, I guess, a productive work environment? Somebody that knows all about workplace environments, but on my show many, many times because he knows this stuff inside out, it is always great when we get Joel Patterson to join us because he knows exactly what all of this might mean for companies that want to stay productive. Joel, how are you on this glorious Monday? I am doing well, Ken. How about yourself? I'm doing well as well. I found it interesting that in the span of 12 years that uh, that uh, this, this office team survey found that 75% of the executives they surveyed this year said that really and truly, if people are consumed with their brackets or a survival, survivor pool or whatever it may be this week, it has no effect on productivity or morale. I, I, I found that kind of astonishing, didn't you? Yeah, it's a, it is a little surprising. I do think that it's, you, you could throw another variable into you know, how companies look at this and, and the work-from-home situation. People have gotten used to probably having their TV on in the background uh, or being distracted, where in the past, March Madness might have created a little bit more of an issue, but but these days, uh, I, I just don't know that people really care as much about it. And the fact that they uh, they they can get to a TV pretty much any time that they want if they're working from home, yeah. I think has really kind of changed with how we look at this. But I do believe that this is an important opportunity for companies to really invest in culture uh, and give people a reason to communicate about something that's not just work. That's been a big you know we, we've seen lots of studies where productivity has stayed up. But social engagement, culture is, is starting to dip off a little bit because you don't have those natural interactions with people. And here's a, here's a very simple way for companies to embrace it, uh, sponsor it even, and, uh, and see if they can get people together in a, in, a, in, a, in a way that they're not used to doing throughout the year. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and that's what you want. You want to create that familia effect inside the workplace like, like people have in, in their homes. I'm wondering... The, the the survey done in 2010, uh, Twitter was in its infancy back then. I'm not sure if Snapchat even even existed back in 2010. But you make an interesting point. Uh, the, social media has evolved to a point where the phone is next to you all the time, whether you're working remotely or if you're working in the office. So there are distractions, if you will, uh, regardless, and people have found a way to work through them. This isn't 1990 no social media, and one television set in the office that everybody gathers around. It, the things have changed, and I think in a large way, we can look at social media for that change. What about you? Oh, yeah, no, I totally agree. I think that it's all, there's so much information available to you at any time, and it just with notifications. And I think, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, we might have the walking around manager, and he might see somebody's uh, uh, computer up with, the bracket on there, some scores or something like that, and that would create tension, and that would create issues typically around the office. And these days, if you're if you're if you're fighting that battle, you've already lost, mm -hmm. right? You can't be can't be wandering around looking and trying to look over everybody's shoulders because not only is it annoying, but there's no greater way to lose your A players 
than by micromanaging them. And 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 frankly, they're gonna they're gonna look at that if they want to look at it anyway. So it's important to to again in this time embrace something that's unique and allow them to to really kind of have some fun. Um, you know, because they're still gonna have people that just call in sick, right? Every year, 10 to 15 percent call in sick mm-hmm. for March Madness. I've actually got one colleague here this year that that decided to uh, to big basketball fan decided to do the uh, the vasectomy scheduling a few days early, which I know is a big a big thing this time of year. Wow. Uh, and and so so if you're not heard of that, there's 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 actually urologists that do promotions around this this time of year. Uh, I saw one the other day that said it's hip to get snipped. <laughs> they they market it during this time and and apparently the, it's about a fifty percent increase in their bookings over the three days that lead up to the first March Madness weekend. So, so you, can, you, can, you go in and you get snipped, and you have to take off from work is what you're saying. No guilt. It's completely guilt-free watching as much basketball as you want for a couple of days. Right. But then again, you, you cut down on providing the world of your greatness in another generation, perhaps. I mean, who knows? I, I suppose you really have to think that through, right? That's a trade-off. You're no, there's no doubt about it. That's a that delicate balance right there. What was that, what was that phrase, snipped? Get hip to get snipped? It's hip to get snipped. Another really? one I heard was vast madness. Vast madness. Vast I had no madness. idea. Well, you know, I mean, I'm a, I'm a little bit older, so um, it, although as you may or may not know, Joel, I'm I'm very virile, but I'm a little bit older, so I probably <laughs> haven't uh, probably haven't been up to date on that as much as I should. Uh, and, and and the other thing you mentioned, which I think is interesting, working from home. Uh, we all know that uh, the pandemic has changed work completely over the last couple of years but a lot of people uh, that i know don't have to be in front of a computer doing work from nine to five that if the works if the work spills over to seven or eight o'clock at night because they wanted to take an hour or two off in that nine to five um a window as long as the work got done before the day was done everything was okay so my guess is um, you know, there may be some people doing that, or they'll put the television right next to their workstation, and they can glance over and maybe take a ten or fifteen minute break and see, you know, if see how their bracket is doing. It's that that's uh, as much as as much as the pandemic has changed lives. It's changed the way people go about their business when they work away from the office, and I think that's just another uh, indication of it. Clearly, uh, everybody's going to do it. Uh, so, so just embrace it. Uh, allows you to, to invest in your company culture, and, and you're right. As long as they're getting their job done, but that even all by itself, saying that is a a big culture shift for some people because a lot of companies will manage to a task, and or, or how you're actually getting that task done, not to a result. And if if you're already managing to a result, you're ahead of the game, and you're not going to be worried about March Madness. If you're worried about every little task along the way, you're, you're going to view March Madness as a complete distraction, and you're going to hate it. Um, so it's really a, a way to, to show your people that you do trust them. As, as simple as that might sound, it's a little it counterintuitive, but it really does show trust and, and um, intention to support them long term. There's got to be bumpers, though. There's got to be speed bumps. I mean, how do you keep this stuff from getting out of control? I, I, I mean, maybe the, the answer to that is you have to have already created an environment or a culture there to keep things from getting out of control. But, I mean, how do you get? How do you keep it from getting where, you know, people are screaming at the TV and they're throwing, you know, paper wads at it because their brackets are up and, you know, all of a sudden it, it, it you know, it gets into like a fraternity a brawl. How, how, do you, how do you prevent it from getting there? Well, you prevent that through your hiring process usually, um, and then you create a culture that allows people to self-police. Something like that just shouldn't be acceptable in, in the culture, and people will let them know. You're always going to have somebody that tries to push the envelope, of course, and so you just have to have rules or policies in place and say, hey, if you get out of line, whatever that de- definition is for you, then this would be the consequences. Yeah. But, but truthfully, I don't find that to be much of an issue these days. People, you know, social media is always there. It's throwing stuff in your face, but it's also showing you a lot of what not to do, and I think people really understand that. And, and typically the, the person that's going to be screaming is the outlier and the exception, and it, it doesn't really pay to make policy based on how they're going to behave. Joel Patterson, workplace expert. He works, or heads up, I should say, the Vested Group, which is always at the top of the list of, of best places to work. By the way, how does somebody get a job with you if you're one of the best places to work? 
uh, it's very easy these days because everybody's looking for people, good people to hire. Uh, but you go to thevested.com, and uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. I would love to talk to you. Okay. Uh, look, I'm going to throw you a curveball here, Joel, because I, I know oh. you can you can hit the curveball. I've, I've, I've thrown a few at you. Um, this really has nothing to do with, with March Madness, but it does have to do with work, and it does have to do with the economic realities of the day. Uh, inflation is through the roof, and gas prices are just staggering. Some people are saying it's... Uh, the, the the price of a gallon of gasoline during the peak summer months of July and August may go as high as seven eight dollars a gallon. We'll see. Um, do you think that will change uh, the philosophy of some of these uh, larger companies about having employees actually inside the building? In other words, burning gasoline, uh, going to and from home, having to buy lunch, which may be exponentially more expensive than what it was before inflation hit. Do you think we're going back more down that road to working from home because of how much it costs to get an employee from home to a job? Maybe even with uh, things that don't pay a lot of money, like the food service industry. Where do you think the economy and the, the fuel crises in this country, how do you think that's intersecting with the way companies may be going with their employees? Well, it's, it's clearly going to be another chink in the armor um, for people that, that, that want to come back to the office. I think the work-from-home folks will, will continue to, to look at those things and, and try to point out why it makes more sense for them to be at home. But it's not just the financial decision. I think that's a big part of how this thing will function long term. But, but the reality is we don't know yet. And the big reason for that is because a lot of the big guys still have not really executed on their plan. There's, there's, the, there's one extreme like Goldman Sachs who says they're bringing everybody back and they've started that process. Not real sure how that's going to play out yet. It's, it's kind of up and down. You've got Google, you've got Apple, and they push their start dates out. I really feel like once somebody kind of draws that line in the sand and sticks with it that gets a lot of attention, then you'll start seeing things break loose. Until then, nobody's really excited to be first. <laughs> and yeah. and I, I can't imagine fuel costs and, and um, everything else that's going on these days isn't adding to the likelihood of people staying home more. But at some point, we have to hit a balance where, all right, are we going to stay? Are we going to go? And, and I, I just don't think that there's enough information. There's not really the, the one company that stepped out there and made it happen yet to prove whether that's going to happen long term or not. See, we've gone from uh, workplace analysis, who's staying at home and who's going, to wadding up paper and throwing at television sets, to vasectomies, all on the span of one <laughs> interview. It's unbelievable, Joel. Unbelievable. Thank unbelievable. you so much, Ken. All right, you stay well. We need to hear your voice. You do the same.